Okay, so the probability tables should be coming around. Uh, ha have they made their way around yet? Who still ha who still doesn't have them? Oh, how did you guys get missed? <coughs> Here's some. You know, if if there are any extras, uh, you know, please uh, just pass them forward, and you know, I'll I'll take the extras. I can always use uh, extra tables. Um, but but the the idea is everybody's going to get one of these um, normal probability tables. Okay, let me just um, take a just a moment to pause as far as where uh, and just talk about where we are in the course and maybe just kind of give you a little bit of a, a big picture of where where we are headed. Okay, so we'll just say. Um, Where we are, okay. And so, broadly, we can kind of broadly say that the course there's kind of like three units here. One is, um, you know, covers chapters one through four, and this is all on descriptive statistics. This, you know, you you learned about. Samples and populations, thank you. Samples, thank you again. Samples, populations, and then kind of, you know, statistics in the sense that, in the sense of numeric summaries. So, so we have uh, numeric summaries for statistics you know, describing variables, all of that stuff, okay? And that, that was pretty much the theme of midterm one, right? You know, looking at, you know, relationships between two variables also, okay? And then, then we started chapters uh, five, okay? So, so chapters five through seven, this is on probability. So, you know, we learned chapter five was kind of probability rules. Today we'll start talking about probability distributions. And after probability distributions, we'll look at sampling distributions. So this is, and I would say this unit is kind of be the uh, focus of midterm two. Okay. So we'll cover probability, we'll cover descriptive statistics, and then we're going to kind of merge these bring these two topics together into our topic on statistical inference. Okay. In statistical inference, we're going to learn how to do what we call, this is all about making conclusions from a sample of data. And our two big topics are confidence intervals. I'll just call them confidence int and hypothesis tests. Okay. And this this is really it's the second half of chapter seven, chapter seven, eight, and nine. Okay, and this will be the kind of the focus of the final exam. Students always ask, is the final exam cumulative? And the answer is loosely yes. There's going to be a heavy focus on chapters 7, 8, and 9, but there will be a few questions from <coughs> chapters 1 through 6. We'll worry about the final when it comes to that time, okay? There's no sense about worrying about what will happen in the future. That's, that's also generally true for most of life as well. So, um, 
Okay, so, you know, currently we're right here. Um, you are here. <laughs> okay, so this is now. We're going to look at probability distribution. So we, you know, you guys just took a quiz on probability stuff from chapter five, and then we'll take a look at probability distributions and, um, and we'll go from there, okay? <coughs> Okay, so let's talk about you know a probability distribution. Okay, so probability distribution. This is there, there's a I guess there's a formal and maybe kind of a loose informal conceptual definition, but uh, we can think of the probability as distribution as uh, a distribution. that describes the probability of a random variable. Okay. And I recognize that this definition in and of itself is not very useful. <laughs> What's a probability distribution? It's a distribution of probability. Um, but it describes a random variable. And so what is a random variable? Um, we will say a random variable is the outcome of a random trial where the outcome is recorded as a number. We'll say the outcome is numeric or recorded <coughs> numerically. Okay, and you know the shape of the distribution tells us which of these outcomes are most likely, which of these outcomes are less likely. The shape of And so, for example, we could say our random variable will be oh, a, uh, a score. So, okay, so we'll say the random variable, it's the outcome of a random trial. So my random trial is going to be, I pick a student from our class at random. Okay, so this would be our random trial. So to do it truly at random, I would need to take the uh, class roster and then use some kind of random system. Maybe the computer can do a, a random number or something and then pick from there, right? I can't just kind of point and say you um, because that's not random. That's, that would be arbitrary, but it's not, not random. The, uh, we would have to do a truly random thing, okay? And so we can say, I'm going to pick a student from our class at random. I'm not actually going to do this, but I'll pick a student from our class at random. And then we, um, we ask, what was your score on midterm one? OK, and so this outcome is numeric. So this, <clears throat> this is a random variable, and the probability distribution is looks something kind of, kind of like this, okay, where. You know values around, 
between 80 and 90 are going to be very common. So this is probably like 80 to 90. These are very common. Okay, and then values that much higher. So there were a few people who scored a 100%, but there it's a little less common, okay? So, you know, 100% less common. And then, you know, some scores uh, on the lower end also less common, okay? All right, and, and, and so the, the shape of the distribution, you know, that would count as a probability distribution. The thing about these probability distributions is that the total area is always going to be equal to 1. Because when we pick someone from the class, that, that value that we get has to come somewhere from this distribution. That, so the total area equals 1. And that's going to be the case for any probability distribution. Okay? And so again, probability distribution, it just kind of describes the probabilities of our random variable, which values from our random variable are more common, which values are less common. So far so good? Okay. So let's do a, maybe an easy example here, or I don't know. Um, so let's say there's a, you know, at a bus stop, the bus comes every 25 minutes. Okay, and let's say this is a super good bus system so that it's exactly 25 minutes and you know, maybe they're robot bus drivers. They don't have any sympathy for somebody who misses it by a, by a second, okay? And so when you get to the bus stop, let's say <laughs> we're going to make this a more, a more ridiculous scenario. Let's say you don't, have a, you don't have a watch with you, or you don't have a clock with you, but maybe you can record time or something. You have a stopwatch. So you get to the bus stop. How long are you going to wait? We don't know, okay? You might wait one second. You might wait up to 25 minutes, okay? Because when you get to the bus stop, we have no idea when you got there in relation to when the bus is coming. So you could wait anywhere from one second to 25 minutes, okay? And technically, every single one of those wait times are equally likely. You have an equal chance of waiting 10 minutes as you do uh, waiting two minutes or you do waiting uh, 25 minutes, okay? Every single one of those um, wait times are equally likely. Okay, so the bus comes every 25 minutes and we will say x will be our uh, random variable. x is equal to the wait time for the next bus. Okay, and so, you know, so we can wait anywhere from basically one second to 25 minutes, okay? And every one of those outcomes is equally likely. But will I ever have to wait 30 minutes for the next bus? No, okay, I, I, assuming everything I said about the bus system is correct, I will, I will never have to wait 30 minutes. Now in real life, accidents happen and buses get delayed, but we will say this is our probability distribution. Everything between zero and 25 has an equal chance of, of, uh, of occurring, so therefore the probability distribution is flat. Here, okay, so our probability distribution is flat. And that indicates 
that all the outcomes between 0 and 25 are equally likely. Because the, the height of the distribution represents how, um, how likely the, uh, the outcome is. Okay, so what if I ask, what is the probability that x is less than 5? That our wait time, we're going to have to wait less than 5 minutes. So if I kind of mark this off. Okay, so the total area of our rectangle will be what? Total area is one. All right, I guess I guess we can make a quick clicker question out of this. So we'll say, you know, what is the probability that my wait time is less than five minutes? It should be it should be easy, but we'll we'll. Uh, If you, if you want to uh, if you want to discuss with your neighbor you can discuss so the question is what is the probability that your wait time at the bus stop is less than five minutes okay so keep in mind the total area of our entire probability distribution is one and we want to know what's the probability that We'll let, wait less than five minutes, okay? Because we can wait anywhere between zero and twenty-five. Okay, I think most of you guys clicked in very quickly here. All right, does anybody else need to click? I'm going to stop it at. We'll say I'm going to stop at one minute here, okay? So five seconds, three, two, one. Okay, we'll stop there, okay? Oh shoot, I did something wrong there. This is, this, okay. All right. So the answer is is B. Okay. Twenty uh, percent, and that is you know when we shade this in. Right. How much have we shaded? We've shaded in one fifth of our rectangle. Right. So our shaded area. is equal to 1 out of 5. So therefore, the probability that x is less than 5 is 0.2, OK, 1 one fifth. The total area is 1. I've shaded in 1 fifth of this. OK, so there's, there's my answer there. OK, or I could ask, you know, what is the probability that, um, that our wait time is between 10 and 20, right? So this is saying, you know, uh, probability that wait time is between 10 and 20 minutes. And our answer there would be what? 0. 0.4, right? I would, I would draw a line from 10, line there at 10 and 20, and then we would shade this in. Let's, uh, let's pick a different color here. And the amount we've shaded in now is 40%, right? Okay, I've shaded in two-fifths of the thing between 10 and 20. Is that okay with everybody? All right, and so, you know, when when you have, this is, this is what we call a uniform distribution. When every outcome is equally likely, this is known as a uniform distribution. When you have this, it's very easy to calculate the areas, right? You say, oh, okay, well, the entire thing is one. I can just figure out exactly what proportion I've shaded in. We we learned in geometry how to calculate areas. It's it's very simple for areas of a rectangle. Okay. Okay. Well, a lot of things in life don't have that nice rectangular shape. Okay. 
So an important distribution we'll take a look at is the normal distribution. Okay, and the normal distribution, this appears um, in many different situations throughout life. Let's see if I can draw this. Okay, that's not too terrible. Okay, and, and this is this is what what it looks like. It's supposed to be perfectly symmetric. It, I guess I do have a symmetric tool, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so we have this, and you know, right in the middle, we can put the uh, the mean. Okay, and so actually, let's let's start with. Um, there's a special case of the normal distribution. We'll call it the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution. This is often called our Z distribution. This has a mean equal to zero and a standard deviation equal to one, okay? And it technically goes all the way to negative infinity and positive infinity, but in practicality, you know, we don't really go, we very rarely go beyond three, three and negative three, okay? But technically, you know, in, in this picture, it looks like at negative three, it's reaching zero, but it's asymptotic. So it's like, it gets very, very close and it gets even closer, and it's, but it technically never touches zero um, only as you uh, approach infinity, okay? But, but anyway, so right here we have zero in the middle, okay? And so what is the total area under the curve? One. The total area is one, okay? Because it's a probability distribution. And if I said, well, I'm going to draw a line at zero, and I'm going to shade everything to the left of this, then you would say, how much have we shaded? The shaded area is what? Yeah, the shaded area is equal to 0.5, okay? So, so we can say, we can express this and we can say the probability that a random value from the standard normal distribution is less than zero is equal to 0.5. So the, the probability that a random value from the standard normal distribution is less than zero is 0.5. And that's what this picture represents. Is that okay? Okay, so this picture represents the standard normal distribution where we are centered at zero and we're going to say, if I draw a line at zero and I shade everything to the left, then my shaded area is 0.5, and that means the probability that a random value from the standard normal distribution is less than zero, that is equal to 0.5, okay? Now, we don't want to have to write probability that a random value from the standard normal distribution is less than zero every single time, so we just say the probability that z is less than zero is equal to 0.5, okay? And every time you see z written like this, that means a random value from the standard normal distribution, okay? So every time you see z, z means random value from the standard normal distribution. This, this is z, okay? So we, we can just say probability that z is less than zero is equal to 0.5. Is that okay? What if I asked you this? The probability that z is greater than zero. This is also going to be 0.5. Technically, it's 1 minus their complements. The probability that z is greater than zero is going to be 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0.5. So that gives, I'm sorry, not 0.5, less than zero. So I get 1 minus 0 0.5, and that is 0 0.5. But yes, the probability of this area over here is also 0 0.5, okay?
the standard normal is continuous, and so technically, okay, this is a there's a there's a technicality. And the probability that z is equal to any actual number, z is equal to zero, or really just, I'm going to just say z is equal to some number um, k. The probability that z is exactly equal to some number is technically zero for all, all values. Okay, it's, it's a little bit strange. But when we have continuous numbers, the probability that you get an exact value is, is zero. So what that, what that means is that the probability that z is less than zero, that is exactly the same that the probability uh, that z is less than or equal to zero. So this, this is all just <coughs> math jumbo technicalities here, OK? If, um, Basically, if you see less than or you see C less than or equal to, when we're talking about the normal distribution, it doesn't matter. In, in other distributions, it might matter, but for continuous ones, it, it's all the same. Okay, is this, is this okay? All right, so when you have the hill and we draw the line right at zero, it's, e it's easy. We can say, well, the total area is 1. 0 splits it in half. Therefore, the area on the left is a half. Okay, But you know, as far as probably your geometry lessons went, you never learned how to calculate the area underneath uh, a hill, or this is called a Gaussian curve. And, and so you know, if I said, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to say, I'm going to go to negative 0.65 and I want to know how much am I shading over here, you don't know how to do this, OK? And, and the true answer is that there is actually there is a formula for this exact curve. It's called the, uh, the Gaussian curve. Um, and so you know, if you, for those of you who've taken calculus, you might say, well, I can do an integral from negative infinity up to negative 0.65. And that would be correct, except nobody does that because the, the computations are, are, are rather terrible. So, so to make our lives easier, we use the reference table. Okay, And so this thing, to get this area, we have to look at the reference table. So you know, how much have I shaded? Okay, so the answer is, you know, we look at the reference table. Okay, so this, the shaded area is equal to what? The probability that z is less than negative 0.65. Is that okay? So this is this is what we're looking up, and what we do is we go to the table and we look up z equal to negative 0.65. And we split this number, negative 0.65, into two parts. We have negative 0.6, and then the 5, and we, so, and we have a 0.05. That's, that's what we're going to do. So in our table, you go to the row, negative 0 0.6, and the column, 0 0.05. Okay, and so what's what's the number that you see there? 0.2578, right? We're seeing 0.2578. And that is our answer. The area that we've shaded here, this area is 0.2578. The table always gives you the shaded area to the left of z. So what is the probability that z is less than negative 
0.2578. So if I draw a random value from the standard normal, the probability that that number is less than negative 0.65, that probability is 0.2578. Is this okay with everybody? All right, so let me just um, ask you another question. What if I shade this area over here, the area to the area to the right? And I ask, what is what is the probability that z is greater than negative 0.65? What is your answer there? Yeah, this side, because the two sides have to add up to 1, over here I'm going to do 1 minus 0.2578. And the resulting number is going to be 0.7422, I believe, if I did my math correctly. Mm -hmm. So what is the probability that z is greater the negative 0.65, I do 1 minus 0.2578, and that gives me 0.7422. Okay, so to get the area to the right, okay, we subtract the area to the left from 1. Because the area to the left and the area to the right have to add up to 1. Does that feel OK for everybody? OK, so then let me give you a, a, a question here. And we'll see, we'll see how we do. Just want to make sure we're going to get the hang of this. So I will ask, what is the probability that z is greater than negative 1.04? OK, so we'll make a clicker question out of this. OK, your answer choices are. attention it says probability that z is greater than negative 1.04 okay I'll let you guys work that out you can uh, talk to your neighbors if you're if you're not sure what to do okay <laughs> Okay, we'll uh, we'll give you just a, a few more seconds to uh, to get your clicks in. You want probability that z is greater than negative 1.04. Okay, I'm gonna uh, click stop here. So uh, if you haven't entered your choice, please do that right now. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Why do I, why does it keep doing that? Okay. Um, no, that's okay. Yes, 94% uh, of you got that right. Some of you selected B, and let's uh, let's talk about our our answer here. Okay, so we look at the uh, the number negative 1.04. So we're going to go to negative 1.04, and you know the my my picture is just kind of arbitrary. The only important thing is that the negative numbers are to the left of zero. Okay, that's the, that's really the only important part, and because it says z is greater than we're going to shade the area to the right. So the shaded picture is going to look like that. 
Okay, so we look up in the row, we go to the row negative 1.0, and we go to the column 0 0.04, right? And the number I find is 0.1492, okay? Now, if you selected 0.1492, that, that is this area over here. This is the area to the left. This is uh, 0.1492 is the probability that z is less than negative 1.04, or is the area to the left of negative 1.04, okay? But what we want is the area to the right. So to get this value, we have to do 1 minus 0.1492. And so the probability that z is greater than negative 1.04 is equal to 1 minus 0.1492. So I get 0.85. 08. Is that okay with everybody? 0.85. Okay. The um, there is a there's a nice property of the normal table in that it is symmetric. Okay. <coughs> so I'll, I'll give you a shortcut. But only use the shortcut if you're comfortable using the shortcut, okay? If, if this shortcut that I say here feels awkward and uncomfortable to you, don't use it, okay? This is, this is also advice for the rest of your life. If you're not comfortable doing a shortcut, don't use it, okay? It'll just cause you more, more trouble. But if you're comfortable with it, sure, go, go for it. Okay, shortcut. The area to the right of z is equal to the area to the left of inverse of z, negative z, okay? So earlier we said, you know, what is the probability that z is greater than negative 1.04? Okay, this is going to be equal to the probability that z is less then the negative of this thing, so that would be positive 1.04, okay? And, and, and the picture that we have going on here is that over here I've got, I can put negative 1.04, and then can I flip this? Uh, whatever, okay? You can, you can imagine there being some kind of like a, like we've, we've flipped the thing around, okay? And then so now we've got a positive 1.04, right? And so the area to the right of negative 1.04 is going to be equal to the area to the left of positive 1.04, okay? And so if this if this number is, I forgot the answer, 0 0.8508, then this answer is going to be 0 0.8508, okay? If you're, if you're okay with that, great. If you're not okay with that, totally don't worry about it, okay? The, uh, the, the always the safe method, safe method and Safe method is area to the right of z is always equal to 1 minus area to the left of z. Okay? So, you know, we have 0 0.8508 that is equal to 1 minus 0 0.1492 because this side is 0.1492. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end here for today. We'll uh, continue on dealing with the normal distribution. We've got a, we're gonna use the normal distribution a lot. We'll, uh, we'll do more of it on Friday and, um, and, uh, and that'll be that.